Our next speaker is Charles Wells from Santa Fe. Thank you, Charles. Always adjust the microphone for me. Um, so at any rate, it's uh, great to be here this morning. Thanks for being invited to uh, present a little bit on the portfolio of TB work at Santa Fe. Um, I just joined the company about six months ago and still learning the organization, so it's a little daunting because it's a big, vibrant organization with a lot going on in the infectious disease realm in particular. So just to talk a little bit about Sanofi structure, which I think will align nicely with the strategy that we have for TB. Uh, there are essentially three areas of the company where infectious disease work is going on. One, of course, is with our colleagues in Sanofi Pasteur who are doing all the great vaccine work that they're involved in. And then we have our colleagues in access to medicine, which is really very much uh, focused on bringing access to much needed drugs uh, to developing countries. And my colleague, Isabel Saran Quisar is here with me as well. And then um, additionally, the unit I work in, which is the Infectious Disease Therapeutic Strategic Unit, and uh, I'm the head of development for that unit, and that's where a lot of TB activities are going on for dis dis discovery of new therapeutics. So in terms of our strategy, uh, kind of awkward here, ah, there we go. Um, for latent TB, of course, uh, we have the wonderful development of rifapentine and isoniazid, the three-month regimen which uh, is very transformative for managing latent infection, especially in the programmatic context. Our colleagues in Sanofi Pasteur are working in early discovery on vaccines for TB. And then additionally, where active TB is concerned, uh, there's currently a phase three study uh, in the collaboration between Sanofi and the TB trials consortium from CDC, looking at a four month treatment shortening regimen and then lastly, the little bullet there, new drugs for drug susceptible and drug resistant TB, which is the unit within which I work. A little bit more on uh, what's going on with rifapentine since the last meeting. Of course, the supplemental NDA was approved in November of 2014 for the treatment of latent infection. Uh, additionally, WHO has released guidelines for the use of the three month regimen for managing uh, latent infection. Rifapentine's also been included on the list of essential medicines with the WHO. Um, additionally, Sanofi's in late stage negotiations with the global drug facility to make uh, rifapentine available through that mechanism. Um, beyond the US, there's a lot of work going on now for submitting dossiers in Taiwan, South Africa, Brazil, Hong Kong, and the EU. And then lastly, there is uh, work underway now for the development of a fixed dose combination with rifapentine. Uh, it has been manufactured and the bioequivalency assessment will start later this year. A little bit more on rifapentine uh, in terms of the active, uh, treatment of active TB. I, I just mentioned briefly that uh, Sanofi is involved in a collaboration with the TB trials consortium with CDC and uh, study 21, uh, excuse me, study 31. And Payam Naid is here uh, as well, so he can answer any questions about that trial. It's an international multi center phase three randomized controlled trial assessing shortened regimen. Uh, it's an open label, three arm, non inferiority design. As of the end of March, there were 17 patients enrolled, but based on a conversation yesterday, I believe another three patients have been enrolled, so we're up to 20 on that one. And then rifapentine is also uh, being. Uh, looked at for children in terms of formulations, and we now have the water dispersible individual pills of uh, rifapentine and isoniazid. Uh, they've been manufactured and they'll be assessed in bioavailability study uh, later this year, and that will pave the way, hopefully, to the development of a fixed dose combination uh, that's water dispersible, and that testing for that will begin later this year as well. Switching gears a little bit more to the discovery and research realm. So uh, Sanofi is very robustly involved in the discovery of new compounds uh, for the treatment of TB. Uh, but the key word for this is partnerships. And uh, Sanofi's philosophy is very strongly to be engaged in partnerships uh, because of the daunting effort to develop new products for TB. Uh, we're very much involved in the TB drug accelerator program. And in particular, we have two very uh, robust collaborations going on with the TB Alliance uh, and Cornell University in drug discovery. 
We're also very involved in European consortia. Uh, we have previously been working with the end of more molecules for TB and had two chemical optimization programs with them, but those have been discontinued. We're also involved in the Innovative Medicines Initiative in Europe uh, with the PREDICT TB uh, project, which is looking at uh, identifying preclinical translational models. In terms of looking for new candidates, drug candidates to take into development, there are two key points that uh, attributes that we look for. Firstly, a new mechanism of action that will allow the agent to tackle both drug susceptible and drug resistant TB, and then also sterilization <coughs> capacity that will ultimately lead to uh, treatment duration reduction. Uh, we have three uh, series that are, are in, in uh, discovery, um, but the lead series is, are the grizzlomycins. Uh, this, uh, these were initially discovered in the 1970s from streptomyces. They inhibit DNA polymerase, uh, and a lot of the results from the activities going on in what's known about uh, this series was published last year uh, in, in a science article, I think in June of last year, so you can get a lot of information there. And uh, this series is very much now a very active part of the uh, portfolio in the collaboration with the TB Alliance. And I know there are others in the room can speak to it much better than can I. And so just a little bit more in addition to the grizzlomycin derivative, which right now uh, is in toxicity studies. We also have uh, the macrolide series. They're also in uh, uh, toxicity studies uh, under investigation and the ureas. So again, a very active portfolio, a lot going on, uh, and the organization is very committed to finding new products uh, to uh, help with the TB, global TB epidemic. Um, with that, I'll stop. Uh, they said to be brief. I think I've been as about as brief as I could be. Uh, and uh, if there are any questions or for clarification, uh, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Thanks, Charles. That may be a record. That's. That's Thanks, Charles. This is Erica Lesson from Treatment Action Group again. Um, thanks for the presentation, and it's great to see you guys are starting to do more stuff outside of the U.S., and I was just curious, um, two things. One, if you can tell us what the price is with the GDF um, for rifapentine, and then also um, what the plans are or status of submission in Peru are. I didn't see that up there in the outside the U.S. countries. Yes, yeah, so to your first question, I don't know what the price is, but what I can say is Sanofi is committed to making sure that price is not a barrier to access to the drug. Um, as far as additional submissions beyond those that I listed, I would have to defer to my colleague Isabel, who's here with me, um, and perhaps maybe offline or after the session she could answer. Um, other questions? Okay. okay, thank you very much. Th thank you, Charles.